I'm John Spiegel, field CTO for HBE Aruba Networking SSE. And I'm joined here by John Green, the CISO or Chief Security Officer for HBE Aruba Networking. John, how you doing? How are you, how are you enjoying the conference? Not too bad. Uh, so let's talk about the role of the CISO. It is getting harder and harder out there. Um, the CISO has to be technical, they have to be business focused, they have to be almost a lawyer in a sense. And I'll be honest, uh, it, it involves every aspect of the business. So in 2024, what are the top two business challenges that you and your peers are seeing today? I think there's, 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 there's a long list, so uh, coming up with top two will be tough, but as I think the regulatory environment is probably the biggest one. There's a yeah. lot of people that are freaked out right now over kind of what happened with Joe Sullivan before, and then uh, the SEC in the last year has started finding people and coming after people, and, and the CISOs uh, that I speak with are a bit concerned about what does this mean? They're out kind of making statements to, for their companies of, hey, we have great security program, we have all, we're on top of all this stuff, and then they get breached, and suddenly the investor community is looking at that and saying, hey, you misled us, you said all this stuff was true. If we look, you know, just as, a, as an example, the last six big data breaches, every one of those companies had a SOC 2 audit, they had an ISO 27001 audit, they had a PCI audit, they had all the audits done, they had all the kind of best practices and, and, and due diligence done that they were supposed to do, and they still got breached. And so it's an incredibly hard problem to, um, to get on top of and to be able to come out with definitive statements of this is what our posture looks like, we're doing a good job, or you know, we think we, we need more work. That's tough, and that's, that's scaring some people away from the profession, um, which, is, which is bad news, because you've got a lot of talented folks out there that just say, I'm not taking on the personal risk of you know, being sued in a personal capacity by, by somebody like the SEC. That's probably one of the bigger ones. Um, the other one, and it, this has been sneaking up on us for a long time, but I think it's really the pervasive nature of IT and um, clouds made this worse in the sense that individual business units can go out and procure their own solutions. And there's no central organization that kind of knows everything that's going on, right? And so this is getting worse with AI. Everybody's off. I'm feeding corporate data to chat GPT. I think most people woke up early and said, oh, we're going to have a policy in place about that. But they don't have the technical controls to kind of shut that down or, de or detect what's going on. And so you've got all this sort of risk out there that you don't even see it, much less have the ability to try to mitigate that risk um, because it's just so easy to consume IT anymore without necessarily going through a central IT department. Those are probably some of the, the bigger ones that I see. It, yeah, you touch on two of the big ones. Uh, more and more legislation, more and more regulation uh, regarding cybersecurity rules within privately, uh, even privately traded companies. CISA came out with an announcement recently that they're starting to get into that, and obviously the SEC. Um, AI is, is, is another big topic. Um, I think governance and, and establishing governance practices is a very key piece. Uh, any recommendations for folks out there that are looking to kind of dive into AI or AIs being put upon them to kind of get ahead of that freight train? Yeah, I think we've, we've actually established a fairly decent practice inside of HPE around that where, and we started this sort of before the, the generative AI hype kind of started reaching its peak, but um, we kind of had five principles around AI. Um, privacy is the very first one. Um, inclusiveness is one. Um, I, I couldn't name them off to you. Antonio did this morning in our keynote. But um, we, th it was a challenge to come up with a governance structure that allows people to innovate rapidly without kind of letting them bypass those guardrails. And so we've got a decent process where we kind of, the first pass of that looks and says, does this thing use customer data? If you use customer data, it's a whole other level of, okay, there's going to be scrutiny around this. If you just want to do a test project with dummy data, um, we're going to give you very quick sign off and approval to go off and do those things. And so th that kind of a, a risk informed decision making process has been really helpful. People are scared inside of a big company like this of saying, oh, there's a heavyweight process that I got to go through. I'm not even going to bother because it's not, it's not worth my time or I'm just going to ignore it all and, and do it and go around. Um, I think by, by having kind of a graduated process for that, we've done a good job at, at, at making it easy. So we touched on AI, um, and we both attended RSA. We both attended Gartner Security and Risk just two weeks ago. Top, top topics, AI, 
uh, zero trust, and this is kind of a new one for me, micro-segmentation. Uh, is there anything kind of on the horizon that HPE Aruba Networking is thinking about in terms of micro-segmentation? Yeah, I'm going to talk about this in my keynote tomorrow a little bit, uh, the general session, but segmentation, network segmentation in general is one of these, uh, and I'm the, I'm, what I'm going to say is that's not the sexy part of cybersecurity, right? That's not the adrenaline-inducing stuff yeah, that you get out of detection and but response. But it's necessary. But it's necessary. And honestly, I would rather not have the adrenaline piece, right? So I'd rather invest up front in kind of the protection actions. And that's what network segmentation is really about. It's saying, I can't possibly, it, the people that say, just patch everything, right? They haven't worked in this space before. It's not that easy to do that. I'm going to have assets that get compromised. Or, and, and network segmentation is really trying to say, let's minimize the blast radius if that does happen so that, um, you know, it's, it's a minor incident to go manage instead of, instead of being a major incident. That's kind of old fashioned blocking and tackling, but you'd be shocked at how many people ignore that and just jump right into, I need AI powered attack detection with automatic yep. attribution to nation states and all this stuff. Like you could have prevented that whole thing from happening in the first place with some of those protective and preventive controls up front and, and segmentation and, and zero trust really gets to that. Well, it's very true. I mean, what wins in football is not a fancy running back or a great quarterback. It's what happens in the trenches. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, John, I want to thank you for spending some time with me and talking about AI, uh, the, the role of the chief security officer, and some of the challenges that we're dealing with in the cybersecurity landscape.